What's going on, guys? Tony here from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com and Paradise Garage. Um, if you guys can quickly type in the chat, um, if you guys can see and hear the video, uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. This is your time. Uh, we're going to be doing auto body Q&A for the next 20 to 30 minutes. So if you have any questions regarding auto body and painting, hiccups, um, you know, during your projects, uh, whatever technical issues, now is the time to type in the chat. Um, we did have a little discrepancy uh, with the time zones here. It looks like um, when my team set up the live, it was supposed to be like in another hour, but we stream at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And um, now it's now I have to actually stream around 12 o'clock Hawaii time, lunchtime, <clears throat> to get that 6 p.m. So maybe we'll change that later, but as of now, um, it is what it is. And uh, if you could just type in the chat, guys, let me know that you see and hear me. Type in the chat. And if you're a Learn All About a VIP member, type in VIP. <clears throat> and then uh, we can get started on your auto body Q&A. Hope everyone's doing great. Uh, let's see. Just want to say thank you for streaming with us today. Welcome Learn Auto Body VIP members. And if you're brand new to the channel... Um, I'm going to send you a link really quickly where you can get free training on auto body and paint by clicking right over here. Let's just put that link in. There you go. What's up? What's up? Dan, Big Red, Charlie, what's up? Michael G, VIP, Monty Casey from Oklahoma. <clears throat> I'm assuming everybody can hear. Um, and see the video. Finally painted my IROC Z. Great, 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 guys. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, what are you guys working on? Any, any questions regarding auto body? Let me know. We'll take air of you today, give you some ideas. Um, what's up, Tom? We're actually going to be starting the van project this week. Um, we had a lot of people vote in on their color of choice, and it seems like the majority of people um, want to see white. So we're going to be painting our teal van uh, using a single stage white with black. Um, you know, we're going to have a floating roof. So around all the windows and all that area going to be black. Uh, the roof is going to be white. I kind of like white because it's going to be nice and cool for me. Uh, and the body's going to be white. And then we're going to do some sort of graphic on the side of the, uh, the van once the white is done. So pretty much we're going to be using the single stage white base, not base, but uh, single stage uh, white as a top coat, you know, base coat, right? And then we're going to put graphics on top of it. So that's pretty much going to be happening. We're going to start the body work later this week. We're going to start filming later this week. And uh, it's going to be a, a project that we'll probably complete uh, within a couple of weeks. Shouldn't shouldn't be that much. Um, but I, like I said, I might be painting the van in pieces and in, in parts and pieces, not parts like disassembling it, but by masking off parts of the van in my two car garage, uh, just because most people actually want to see that. So we'll break it up into a couple of different paint jobs. We'll do the roof one day, maybe the roof. And yeah, we'll do the roof one day and then we'll do the body. We could do the body in a day or break it up into two days and then we could do the black and then we could do the graphics. So it's going to be a, a multi-day paint job, but it's going to give you guys an idea on how to do something so large from, you know, a smaller garage without a spray booth. Uh, if you guys are looking into that, does this sound interesting? You guys kind of liking that idea? What do you think? Um, I know we get a lot of questions of people asking, Hey, can I, can I break up a paint job into multiple paint jobs? You know, like do panels and sections. And I, I say, yeah, you could do it as long as you're not doing candies or pearls, you know, as an addition to your, your regular paint, you guys, cause it's just hard to blend and hard to match. <clears throat> Jeff is from Ohio. Great. Jeff, how did your uh, your IROC Z come out? What year was that thing again? VIP Orlando, Phoenix, or 
Phoenix, Arizona. Harold Schwinn, what's up? VIP Kansas. Tom, what's up from Tampa? Hello from Oklahoma. Michael G. Austin, Texas. I miss Texas. I actually really miss Texas. Texas is cool. Dan, Big Red, what's up, guys? What's up? What's up? So any any questions you guys got or, or, or not? Whatever. You know, I don't care. This is your time. I'm here to hang out for another 20 minutes or so. Um, and if you guys have any questions on auto body, let me know. Jersey, what's up, Jersey? How's the uh, the weather? Getting warmer over there or what? I know you guys, some of those guys out there were getting hit with some snowstorms. Haven't talked to my brother recently, but yeah, they had snow a couple weeks ago. So what's new, guys? What's new? What's new? Type in the chat. Let's talk. Let's talk. What's new? Uh, what's the best way to remove two-sided tape from the back of moldings? Um, pretty much scrape it off. Um, I would get a razor, um, get a razor blade and get close as possible and just scrape it off. And then you could finish taking off the adhesive with a little bit of lacquer thinner on a rag. Lacquer thinner on a rag will just take the rest of the glue off and you're good. Pretty easy process. Hello from Spain. Albert, Spain. Cool. Thank you for tuning in all the way from Spain. What time is it in Spain? Cars and Beats Official. I have to respray a car that's deep lilac pearl that requires black base coat. Do you think I need to sand all the way down and respray the black base coat or can I just spray the purple pearl? Um, if you're doing all of that in one paint job, you don't have to sand anything, right? So if you did your black base and you're putting your pearl on same day, you don't have to sand unless you screw up, unless you got a lot of dust in an area or you got runs, that's when you would kind of sand, block it out rebase it black a little, fix it, right? And then put your pearl on top. Um, you have about a 24 hour window, give or take. If you're gonna be doing your black base coat and waiting a week, uh, I would scuff it up with like 800 grit um, and then rebase it. Okay, put a fresh coat of base on it and then put your pearl on. Hopefully that helps, let me know. Harold Schwinn, just about to finish up my restore. My first restoration will send you some pictures when finished. Couldn't have did it without your sessions. Awesome, Harold. Um, send in some pictures, definitely. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Long time no see. <clears throat> Michael G., my mother used to have a Mercedes hardtop convertible that was always changing colors, uh, depending on how you looked at it. It was a result of a candy or different color flake Pearl factory paint. Was this a result of candy or different color flake or pearl? It could have been a pearl paint job. Um, most factory paints are not fancy, um, like color shift. Okay, so I'm thinking it was probably just a pearl paint job on that thing. And hey, maybe it wasn't factory. Are you sure it was factory? Mercedes convertible. went paddle boarding yesterday and my shoulder hurts a little bit. <laughs> what's up, Jose Zapata? What's up, what's up? All right, guys, I'm just going to throw in another link here to learn auto body and paint.com for all you newbies um, that want to get some free training. Just get to that URL get on the notification list and um and stay up to date uh one more thing if you guys are looking for great spray guns check out zula.com same spray guns we use uh here and i just actually recommended this to a, another body shop guy that i that i know um and i had a couple i had a couple uh spray guns and i i let him use the atom x27 and he was like he used it for clear coat literally saturday night he's like this gun sprays amazing he really loved it um alex says respraying my metal aftermarket roof rack what primer or coating would be best for this so if, if you're spraying over bare metal 
you could use a DTM primer, which is a direct to metal primer. Okay. And then you could sand that and spray right over it, uh, whatever top coat you're going to put on it. Uh, when you sand it, I would kind of block it out with like a 400. It depends on what type of finish you want. If you're going to be super anal, you want a really nice glossy paint job, go with like a 400 grit um, when you sand it. If you really don't care and you're doing a single stage, you can go a little coarser grit because single stage is a thick paint and it'll it'll hide, you know, up to 360 sand scratches or even 320 actually. So you don't have to get as fine uh, with preparation if you're doing single stage. Just keep that in mind. You got more you got more leeway. You don't have to be as you know as a you know you don't have to get that fine and and be so tedious with your prep work because a single stage is like pouring on. You know it's so thick. The paint is so thick. Um, it will look. It will look good purple, green, blue, depending on how you looked at it, where the sun hit. Purple, green, blue. Yeah, it was probably uh it could just a probably a pearl paint job on that thing. Pearl paint job. I would definitely think it's a pearl paint job. Not candy. The, you don't get candies um from factory. Tuning in from Trinidad. Cool, dude. Cool, cool, cool. Why, Michael? Are you looking to replicate a paint job like that? Again, guys, Tony here from Learn Auto Body taking your questions. Um, any auto body questions you have, type in the chat. We'll help you out. And if you want to get more free training on auto body, don't forget to hit up learnautobodyandpaint.com. I'm going to put the link in the chat right here. You can sign up for some free trainings, updates on the newsletter. Uh, you'll get sent videos, PDFs. Uh, articles and, and all kinds of stuff and, and content when it comes to auto body. So you can start this trade from your own home garage and things like that. How's everybody doing like with work, like financially with work? Um, I know things are getting a little bit crazy, you know, in the world, you know, between COVID, the wars, you know, the oncoming wars, uh, the, the inflation. Is anybody talking about that? <laughs> any of you guys concerned about any of these things? Nala. Dogs chasing chickens out there. No problem, Alex. Any of you guys in here playing with crypto, with stocks, options, anybody? You know, like my standpoint is it's always good to have extra sources and extra streams of income. You know, so, you know, me helping people out like this and, and people joining my VIP or whatever, that's a stream of income for me. It's not crazy, you know, but it's a stream. Um, I also do cryptos. I have other online businesses. Um, I coach people online, starting online businesses. Um, I, I do a bunch of things. So it's always important to have an, an alternative stream of side income. Just wondering how everybody's doing. Like, how are you guys are doing? You know, like on a personal note with all the things going on. Gas is pretty much about $5 a gallon here in Hawaii now. I know California is always, it's always been higher than Hawaii here, but Maui, the other island, normally higher than Oahu, where I am now. So it's, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know what, what it is. It's probably like, let's, let's take a look actually. Maui gas prices. A little over five bucks, five thirty, five thirty to five fifty per gallon. Hawaii, four ninety nine, five oh five, five eleven. Are we still here? Are we live, guys? 389 in Wichita, Kansas. Looks like we paused. Are we still live? My screen froze up. 389. Uh, should metallic paint be applied wet like a solid paint or like a dry? Always wet. No matter what paint you're painting, you got to paint wet. Um, and if you have a heavy metallic, just make sure that you're spraying your you know, 50% overlay, you could go as much as 60% overlay, you know, a little bit tighter spray spray widths. Um, and then 
I always like to crisscross it. So if you're going across, if you're, say this is a hood of a car, if you're going, you know, if you go, say this is the hood, this is the windshield up here. Normally you, you would coat this way, pick it back up and coat this way. But I like to also spray this way after you coat it this way, go this way, crisscross it. Um, be to avoid tiger striping. And a, a number one cause of tiger striping is not keeping a tight spray pattern, not crisscrossing like that, or having a crappy spray gun where your, your material is coming out heavier in the middle or heavier on the sides with not enough in the middle. So a lot of cheap crap spray guns don't have an even spray pattern. So if you're doing heavy metallics, single stage, base coat, clear coat, just make sure you spray, you know, a piece of paper um, on your wall or something just to see how your paint is laying out. Because if it's spraying, you know, just do your test spray. Just first hit it like that. Hit hit it once. Get your spray pattern. It's usually like an ovalish look. Uh, and then also give it a quick little spray, you know, and see how it looks. If it seems thinner in the middle, thicker on the outsides of the fan then it could be the spray gun or you might just need to clean it okay because a dirty spray gun will also uh, affect it with your holes your holes being clogged up on your air cap can affect that because it's not it's not blowing your air to, to spread it uh, so that's pretty much it all right uh tom says did a rear bumper replace and rear fender dent repair on a silver metallic the blend was a pain had to go all the way to the roof line and and the rear door but i got it awesome bro awesome awesome if you get a chance man send in a picture we'd love to see it just send it into tony at learn auto body and paint.com we'd love to see it sounds like tom what are you doing like side jobs now tom are you doing it out of your uh your home garage I know you've been doing a lot of little little side little gigs here and there. So yeah, guys, it's pretty much it. Okay, let's see. Any other questions? How, how many guys are tuning in from Facebook? A couple of guys on Facebook. Oh, you guys want to see something? So this was my first motorcycle respray when I was 13 years old. That's me. And that's a 88 or 89 YSR 50. I got the same bike now, but that was when I bought it from a friend of mine that lived down the street. I actually bought it from my friend's older brother. He was probably like 17, 18. I was 13. And um, I, I saved my money through a paper route and uh, also flipping mopeds, 50cc mopeds. And I bought that thing for 1300 bucks, stripped it down completely to the frame. Keep in mind, I was 13 and um, completely repainted it, like put a base coat, clear coat. I painted it white with red pearl. Um, I redid the rims and the frame red and I it was a red and white combination. And it was a pretty cool. And I sold it for like twenty five hundred. Pretty neat. Just for friends and family. That's cool, bro. Hope you're making a little bit of cash. <laughs> hey there, calling in from Ontario, Canada, enjoying your VIP courses. I have to paint the front and rear bumper on a Corvette. Uh, will the Flex Agent Impact color match with the rest of the vet? No, it will not. It will not. And honestly, you really don't even have to put Flex Agent. Paint is already flexible. If you're going to be hitting a bumper cover hard enough to to crack it right to to wrinkle it and crack it it's going to crack with flex agent anyway and paint is is flexible to a certain extent you know just paint alone so but hey if you want to put the i'm not saying don't use it 
if you want to add your additive, you can add it. No problem. I'm just saying it really doesn't make a big difference. in in from what I've seen over the years, it doesn't make a difference. But if you want to use it, use it and it will not affect the color match. Um, again, if you're color matching, OK, if you're painting the bumper cover alone without blending into your hood or fenders, you might see a difference because you cannot make old paint look like new paint. And when you're putting a fresh coat of paint on, you know, it's going to it might be brighter because of, you know, a little bit of fading or sun damage on your your old paint job. So the you know, if the right way to do it is to blend it in and clear coat your whole front end, you know, or the, the adjacent panels, your, your fenders or your hood. Um. But again, you don't have to. Another way, if you just wanted to paint panels, just single panels without blending into your fender or hood, uh, is to make sure you buff out your adjacent panels when the paint job is over. So do your paint, let that cure, right? Wait a couple of days, day or two, uh, and then just do a good buffing compound and uh, swirl mark removing polish on your hood to bring out the brilliance again from your old panel, the paints on your old panels, so it matches better. You might actually even want to buff out the whole car. And that's what we do all the time, you know, um, if we're painting single parts. So just kind of putting that out there. Okay, let's see, Daryl. You got it, Daryl. By the way, we have three feet of snow on the ground. That's crazy. That's a lot. I, and I am enjoying my islands. Wilford Shaw. Hi, Tony. I retired June of 2021. Uh, your Learn Auto Body and Paint program have come in good in good use. Gas here is around 420. Wow. Five dollars a gallon sign teaching. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, bro. Thanks for tuning in. Good to see you. Uh, Michael G. I'm gonna be moving soon and we'll be hauling my car up on a flatbed U-Haul trailer. Right now it's 100 percent ready to paint. Any suggestions on what to do so I don't have to worry about travel issues? Um, is it in primer? Is it in primer? Um, I think if you could cover it, if it's on an open flatbed, you might just want to put a car cover on it and, and just strap it down really well with some rope um, or straps just so it doesn't, you know, blow away. You might just want to put a car cover on it. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to go over it anyway once you get it to your location before you paint it. So, you know, you might be 100% ready to paint, but you're going to have to do prep work after that haul. You know, unfortunately, you're going to have to do it, right? Before paint, you're always checking the panels, checking everything, making sure it's good before paint. So, uh, and also I would make sure you wash it down because you don't know where, where it's going, what elements it's going to be exposed to, maybe... You know, it's going to maybe it's going to haul by a gas station where somebody's spraying WD and it gets on it. So you're going to want to actually, you know, you're going to want to make sure you clean it before you you uh, paint it. Harold Sweat said, I thought I had the body work smooth after paint, after primer, but after clear coat, there was some rolly places. What could I do? What could I do different next time? Um. What you could do next time is just double check your work better. Maybe use a guide coat on areas where you were doing body work. And that happens to everybody. You know, there's always, you know, sometimes you might be fully done with a, with a job, ready to paint. And then right when you're about to paint, you notice something. You notice a nick, a chip, or a little thing, you know. But so the, it's either you don't paint it, you fix it right then and there, and then you paint it, or you paint it and then just redo the single panel later, knowing that you have to redo it. You know, knowing if you have a little wave in this panel, just, just say, screw it, paint it, right? Let that set up for a week or two and then redo that panel. That's pr pretty much the easiest way. I, that's how I would do it. You know, redo it after your paint job because it's, it's easy to do. Sometimes your paint job will fill out that little waiver imperfection. It, all you have to do is block it out. If not, you can add a little bit more putty 
and block it out that way. Hopefully that helps. Uh, just concerned that I might end up getting something messed up in the travel. It's been garage for about three years to this point. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So Michael, no matter what, you're going to want to go over the car once you get it to location. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, it might be ready for paint, but cover it, <clears throat> ship it. Once you get it, you're going to have to go over it again anyway. So whatever, you know, if something happens to it, you're going to have to go over it anyway. If nothing happens to it, you got to go over it anyway. So hopefully that gives you a little idea. Uh, Charlie says your paint program is great. Do you have any others? What kind of programs are you looking for? Charlie, um, I do have a program teaching e-commerce and how to make money online. Um, I have a crypto newsletter that I publish um, and actually going to be creating a course on cryptocurrency, how you can get traded. Um, actually made a couple hundred thousand dollars last year trading crypto. Um, not really trading, but getting into the great, getting into good coins with not much volatility, you know, and, and secure coins that are going to make you money. So I got, I got a crypto program. As long as Charlie, as long as you're subscribed to the newsletter at Learn Auto Body, what I do every once in a while is I'll send my, my, uh, my subscribers like you guys, like an opportunity, like, Hey, if you're interested in this sign up here. So as long as you're on the main newsletter here at Learn Auto Body and Paint.com, I will, I haven't, I haven't mentioned anything in the past three, four months, maybe longer, but Every once in a while, I will mention something to my newsletter guys. And if you if you're interested, you could check it out or whatever. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. You got it, guys. You got it. All right. Any last minute questions, guys? Auto body last minute questions. Going to take one more. One more question. If not, we're going to head out. We've been on for about 30 minutes. I'll be back on next week about the same time. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to drop the link again. Um, just go to learnautobodyandpaint.com to get some free auto body information. Get on the newsletter. Uh, there's a special opportunity to join VIP if you wish to <clears throat> after you subscribe. And um, here is the site, uh, tazula.com, if you want to check out some awesome spray guns. Go right over there and uh, pick yourself up a... I like the Atom X27 a lot. Great spray gun. Atom X20 is a good starter spray gun. And um, the 88 is also a pretty good spray gun. Okay, last question. Henry Dixon. Hey, Tony, I'm ready to paint my spoiler on my Toyota. I scuffed it up with 120 grit, then sprayed 2K primer. Can I use a rattle can to paint it due to its size you can you can i would look into getting a spray max clear coat kit okay that comes in a rattle can you can get them for about 25 bucks on ebay rattle can 2k you pop the bottom it releases the activator you shake it up for five minutes and you got 2k clear coat so if you can get your base coat in a rattle can um, most paint shops they will they can make it for you like that i don't see why not it's a small little project uh, but i will tell you that the clear coat uh, is not as durable as a as a as a standard clear coat that you mix and spray with a spray gun okay uh, the 2k is a thinner uh, the can 2ks are a thinner clear coat okay uh, but i've done it i've sprayed fenders uh, with it to my older youtube videos back in when i was doing them in texas you could do it Okay. Charlie, do you use water-based paint? I don't. Uh, I don't use water-based too much. Um, a lot of the guys I know here don't use it, uh, but you can. Same exact process, just takes a little longer to dry. Uh, so when you're spraying, your flash time is going to be a little bit longer. Um, they have those fancy um, heaters if you want to just dry it. You know, you can kind of speed dry it a little bit, but it's the same exact process. Just got to wait a little bit more for flash times um when spraying bobby b vip from reno sorry about being late forgot about the time chains yeah me too me too 
Always love Monday Learn Auto Body Day. Thank you, Tony. Tom, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate you guys um, hanging out. Hit the like button, guys, before you leave. And I'm going to answer this last, last question from Stacy, um, And then I'm out. Uh, I started painting sealer base and clear my 1995 f-150 home garage i have some nibs derbies in the clear coat that i didn't notice until i finished how do i fix this simple you could just get some 2000 grit block it out and buff it out okay good luck with that we have videos um stacy at learnautobodyandpaint.com just check out the blog we have videos on all of that subscribe to the newsletter um, so yeah, if you have little nibs, crap like that, you just basically got to color sand and buff it out. Okay. Hopefully you have enough clear coat to do that. Um, but normally two medium wet coats of clear coat is more than enough, uh, to give you some extra room for wet sanding and buffing. All right. Thank you guys. I'll be back on next week. In the meantime, stay tuned for new videos this week. I'm editing another one right now after I get off the call and um, I will talk to you soon. Uh, one last link again to learn auto body to get your free trainings and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you later. Aloha. Bye. Peace out guys. Thank you.